All right, guys, welcome to the channel. We have a new product for you. It's actually pretty new on the marketplace, and Crayworks, who sent it to us, they haven't even put it out on Amazon yet. They have quite a few things on Amazon, but this is currently only found on their website. But I want to tell you guys all about it, what's unique about it, what's important about it, and maybe if it's something that you guys might like to use for cleaning rusted parts. So hang in there, we'll go through it. The unit itself, again, is an electrolytic rust remover. And basically it works by the process of electrolysis for de-rusting and cleaning uh, metals. So anything that is ferrous is going to be able to be used with this device. And so how it basically works in a nutshell, and we'll go through all of the pieces, is you're going to use voltage to increase the voltage, lower the voltage as needed for the product. And you also use a timer uh, to time it based off of you know how long you have it in this water solution. And then you'll have these leads that will tie to both an anode and a cathode. Anode meaning this is going to be your positive side, and it's going to be actually clipped on to what you see here, which is a stainless steel, uh, 304 stainless steel rod that will be submerged in water. And then your cathode is going to be connected directly to the object itself. So let's say that here is this Milwaukee wrench. So, and the process gets a little easier, especially if you want to hang it. You don't want to put these actual leads inside the water. So you actually want to hang it like so, right? So you could actually maintain that contact without getting your leads inside there as it will destroy or degrade those leads. They also sent in the kit these additional copper leads. I think the point of that is, is if you want to also go the route of just hooking the material and copper has a high conductivity. You just bring these back in and loop them back through the hook. So you hook it through like so, and then it hang inside the tank, and I'll let the process work as well. So those are what's included at the hooks. And then they also include, I'm gonna zoom out here for guys so you guys can see it, but they also include this bucket. And we'll get in close detail of it, but the idea for this bucket is this, it's about six liters, about 1.6 gallons. It's gonna be sufficient enough to carry some large projects that you'll need to put inside there. Now, it's also important to add in the solution baking soda, they say about 100 grams of solution to help the process work. And then depending on how rusted your projects are, uh, they say about 30 minutes to about an hour to maybe even an hour and a half, depending on how, on the level of rust. So surface rust, they're saying, that should be able to get cleaned up pretty easy with about a half hour. So I'd say more so this side. And then anything that actually has chunks it's going to be closer to an hour. So we'll run that. We'll see how well it works or not. I'm going to go ahead and set this up, and you'll see it all together, and we'll go ahead and try it out, see how well it works with removing rust. All right, guys, so now we're back. We went ahead and filled up the bucket most of the way, and we also ended up putting in our anode, which has that 304 stainless steel rod in it, and then we also hooked up our power source, which is the electrolytic cleaner. And what we'll do is we'll turn that on and then we'll set the timing as well as the voltage. But first things first, we take some of this baking soda, put it inside there, and then hang our cathode. So let's get that done. And in order to help the process, we're gonna put these actually pretty close to each other. I'm going to try to keep it pretty close to the side here. You obviously do not want them to touch because that could cause some issues. And initially, uh, there is a safety circuit inside here that should cut it off if you do. But as it says right now, we're actually going to be sitting lower. We'll stay away from this anode here. But we're sitting lower than it so it can make its electrical connection between the two. So next up we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. The unit is on, and then we're gonna go ahead and set our voltage. Again, you can all, I'll go all up to 24 volts if you like. So as you see here. And then we should also start to see, as we connect this lead on to the negative, we should probably start to see some bubbling. So we'll turn it back down so you can see what that looks like as it connects. All right, connected connected set a timer 
All right, as the timer kicks on, then it starts to go. All right, already seeing some bubbling down there. We'll go ahead and set it to the initial 30 minutes. Roughly, and then we'll go ahead and turn up the voltage. There you, go. you can see it start to bubble even more. It will take around to 20 volts. That timer, we'll set it to 30. And we'll watch it here as it starts to go to work. So we'll check in here in just a minute and we'll see how it looks. Maybe after about 15 minutes, we'll check back in. All right, guys, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and pull out. Of course, it looks like I accidentally tapped that, but let's go ahead and pull it out and see how she looks. Now you definitely see some popping off of the rust right there. So it appears it's actually doing its job. Okay, let's go put it back in there. We'll see how it looks after uh, some more time. Go ahead and pull this guy up so we don't hit him. There we go. All right, we'll keep the process going. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update. I let this run for actually several hours. At first on the lower voltage dampers, and I just maxed it out because it didn't seem to be doing a ton of removing of the rust. Uh, but if you look down inside, you can actually see there's quite a bit of rust formulated on the bottom of the bucket. Now let's pull it out, we'll take a look together. I haven't had a chance to see this since I let it run this last time. But let's see how we've done. Okay. That's worth noting is that is actually coming off by hand at this point. We're actually wiping off some of that rust. Hmm. Now what I like about this compared to some of the like the other chemicals uh, that you could use, some of the rust removal chemicals, what they could do actually sometimes is actually remove the plating that is on the tooling itself, and so far this one hasn't removed, I could tell any of the plating. So it looks like I can actually come back now and use a wire brush to finish off the job. So let me give it a nice little uh, once over clean job, and then we'll, uh, we'll reconvene. I'll give you guys my final thoughts, and we'll go from there. Alright guys, so we got done cleaning it all up. I went ahead took a rag, this is one of two rags. Uh, just wiping off all of that rust. And as you can see here, it took off quite a bit. You know, this was the better side of the two, which looks fairly normal. But on this side, it took off a lot of that heavy rust that was here. I did a little scrubbing with my wire brush, and it took off the majority of it. Now, there is still some inside. This spring looks a little rough. But all in all, I can actually function now, whereas it wouldn't function before. So... I'd say it did a really good job. Now it took longer, a little bit longer than anticipated. I feel like the electrolysis process with this machine uh, is a little bit slow going as far as getting that done. But I've done the chemical process as well. And the chemical process tends to strip off, if you're not careful, even more, right? It'll actually get underneath the rest of that nickel plating or chrome plating. And it'll really start to pit at it. So it acts like an acid and uh, in this case, it actually just releases the rust. I don't see any spots on the plating where it went through and did any adverse damage. So I would say that's a win-win. It's a slower process. I think it's a more direct and precise process. So if you're interested in something like this, I'd say it is definitely a win situation. So that being said, where do you find this at? Uh, Creeworks does not have it yet on Amazon. I'll shoot you guys a link down below. Uh, it is on their website. Pricing for it is about $59.99 currently. And usually it's about $69.99. And I imagine there may be some sales, especially as we go into the holiday. If it's something that you guys are interested in, I'd say it does a job. If you have rusty tools, throw them all in that bucket. Uh, let it go at it. You probably do one at a time. I don't know how well it'll do multiples. 
Uh, if you guys are interested in a video like that, I'd be happy to. Just let me know in the comments below. Let me, let me know your guys' thoughts. Is this a process that you guys have used? Is there a better process that you like better? I am all ears. So, because I got plenty of rusted tools and parts I'd love to continue to clean up. So, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you guys don't mind, please give a like and please subscribe down below so you don't miss out on further content. And those likes definitely help to make this channel grow. All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll talk to you soon.